हेलो एवरीवन वी आर स्टार्टिंग द न्यू वीडियो सीरीज़ फॉर आर सब्जेक्ट इसी फोर नोट टू नैनो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इन दिस वीडियो सीरीज वी शैल कवर सम इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स इन आर मॉड्यूल फाइव सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ आर वीडियो सीरीज एंड लेट्स सी वॉट आर द मेन कंटेंट्स ऑफ द सिलेबस ऑफ मॉड्यूल फाइव सो इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी शैल बेसिकली कवर द ट्रांसपोर्ट मेकानिजम इन नैनो स्ट्रक्चर्स so the transport mechanism may be under the effect of an electric field we shall see that and as a result what are the different type of transport mechanism that is generated the parallel transport perpendicular transport the hot electron effect so on we shall also see the quantum transport in nano structures and the coulomb blockade effect later we shall discuss the transport mechanism in nano structures under the effect of a magnetic field there we will observe the behavior of a crystal under uh, a magnetic field as well as some very common and very important effects so basically for this uh, module i have referred the textbook nano technology for microelectronics and optoelectronics by j m martinez duart and the chapter 6 and 7 will do the job so let's begin before we start our module let's have a quick recap of what we have learned so far so we have completed four modules and in the four modules we began with the mesoscopic physics uh, which was governing the nano structures we saw the quantum nature of uh, nano structures the de broglie wave length Uh, various characteristic length the schrodinger equations we discussed all these things later we went on to the uh, different types of nano structures we have the 1d 2d 3d zero dimensional nano structures we discussed their properties and in the second module uh, we covered the fabrication methods of nano layers as well as nano particles we had a number of fabrication te techniques for nano layers and nano particles and later in the third module we focused on the characterization schemes we had a number of characterization schemes for uh, analyzing the physical as well as the chemical properties of a nano material so we discussed that and finally in the fourth module um, we focused uh, basically on the two dimensional electronic systems we had the quantum wells multiple quantum wells modulation doped quantum wells um, then the super lattice the concept behind super lattice was pretty important uh, we had a, a beautiful analysis of that and that's where we stopped our uh, session so to continue from there in this module we shall basically uh, see the transport mechanism right so uh, in this session the first session we'll deal with the electric field transport mechanism of uh nano particles right okay so the electric field transport uh how does the electrons in uh, nano structures move under the influence of a electric field that's what we are going to discuss here in the session right okay so we are like well familiar with the quantum wells the concept of quantum wells and we have one of our favorite exams right uh, of the modulation doped heterojunctions we have gallium arsenide and aluminum gallium arsenide uh, quantum wells formation we have discussed that now we have seen that uh, see when uh, semiconductors of different band gaps join at the interface we get a quantum well now what happens is the behavior of our electrons in this quantum well when their motion is parallel to the interface we have this uh, quantum well when their motion is parallel to the interface we call that kind of transport as parallel transport now uh, are we familiar with parallel transport i would say yes because parallel transport is nothing but the uh, normal electron motion in a normal 3d bulk semiconductors except that there is a difference in their dos which is the density of state function as well as the electron scattering mechanism 
So, parallel transport is nothing but the uh, normal electron motion in a bulk semiconductor. The difference arises in the DOS function as well as the scattering mechanism, electron scattering mechanism. That is one type of uh, transport under the influence of an electric field, the parallel transport. Now, apart from the parallel transport, we have another kind of transport called the perpendicular transport. And which we can uh, at least guess from the name that when the electron uh, travels in a direction which is perpendicular to the your interface or perpendicular to your potential barrier this is called parallel uh, perpendicular transport i'm sorry perpendicular transport so when your electron motion is parallel to the interface you have parallel transport and when your electron transport is perpendicular to your interface or when your electron transport is through the potential barrier you have perpendicular transport. Now, uh, here the perpendicular transport is like completely different from that of the bulk materials. We can't expect perpendicular transport to be same as that happens in bulk materials. Because in perpendicular transport in nanostructures, normally the transport mechanism is based on tunneling effect. So that's, uh, so in this session, we shall deal with Parallel transport alone. So uh, we have seen that parallel transport is the movement of electrons parallel to the interface. So make that make that very clear. Now uh, initially, this parallel transport was observed in MOSFETs, and later this was utilized for our MODFETs too, or the modulation dot heterojunction quantum structures. So what was the specialty of both these structures was that electron motion uh, occurred in a region where we don't have any kind of charged dopants. If you uh, recollect in MOSFET the electron motion was through the channel right or the inversion layer. So where we don't have any charged particles or charged dopants present because that's uh, basically the substrate. And coming to the mode fit, uh, see mode fit is nothing but our modulation dot heterostructure, right? Which, uh, which we have formed uh, from a gallium arsenide as well as aluminum gallium arsenide structure. So this is nothing but our modulation dot heterojunction, right? So when I say mode fit, let that uh, image come to your mind. Fine. So uh, again, coming back to mode fit, the electron motion is taking place in the gallium arsenide region, which is again not doped it is uh, it is an intrinsic gallium arsenide so again that region is free of charged dopants so due to this property itself the electrons can reach very high mobilities because they don't have any charged dopants to uh, stop their transport now uh, parallel transport is similar to the transport in bulk semiconductors we have seen that right we have just discussed that now what we have to consider in the case of parallel transport in nanostructure is that we have additional scattering mechanism and now we are not dealing with bulk semiconductors we are dealing with low dimensional system and that is very important so let's see the electron scattering mechanism that happens in our nanostructures so basically uh, the main scattering in nanostructures is due to phonons impurities or even surface roughness now what is phonon that's a question like uh, we are familiar with photon right it's just nothing but a quantum of light similarly phonon is nothing but a quantum of lattice vibration they are similar to photons, right? But phonon is lattice vibration. A quantum of lattice vibration is called a phonon. And uh, they carry heat, heat in the material. Now, due to these presence, due to the presence of phonon, impurities, surface roughness, we have different type of scattering mechanism, such as the electron phonon scattering, impurity scattering, surface roughness scattering and inter subband scattering so we shall uh, see in detail each of the scattering mechanisms to begin with 
the electron phonon scattering well the electron phonon uh, interaction we can observe it in most of the materials there is no specific um, material to observe this it is a uh, very common it is a common kind of scattering now how is how does the scattering occur so uh, see in room temperature basically our uh, lattice our lattice of material is not very uh, it's not constant right they are uh, continuously since the atoms are continuously vibrating the lattice of the materials also keep vibrating about their mean position so whatever be their position they are vibrating uh, along their position and this vibration can increase the temperature and this can thereby cause the generation of phonons okay so we have our uh, atomic lattice or we have the lattice of our structure and at room temperature itself the lattice is not constant the lattice keeps vibrating along its uh, mean position due to this vibration of course when there is a uh, continuous motion due to this motion there is a, a development of temperature and this temperature and this lattice vibration will cause the generation of phonons now once uh, this phonons are generated we already have the electrons right we already have the electrons which are moving these electrons will have uh, an opportunity to collide with the vibrating lattice thus we have the electron phonon interaction and the electron phonon scattering i hope that is clear okay so the phonon scattering the electron phonon scattering mechanism is like uh, we can observe it when your temperature is greater than 50 kelvin now uh, in the case of narrow quantum wells when your the width of your quantum well is too small the phonon momentum may not be conserved and as a result what happens now when there is a uncertainty in the momentum the number of electron phonon scattering also increases when you uh, particularly don't know the momentum of your phonon the electron phonon scattering also increases and thus and because of this reason the phonon scattering becomes like uh, very strong in low dimensional structures when your temperature is uh, when your temperature is greater than 50 kelvin but in the case of bulk semiconductors the phonons have well defined momentum we don't uh, have a uncertainty in momentum for bulk semiconductors so this is a one important difference right in the case of nano structures the momentum of phonons are not very certain you can't be certain about it and because of which the electron phonon scattering is very high but in the case of bulk the phonons have very well defined momentum right so that's about electron phonon scattering here we have seen uh, how is what is phonon how does this electron phonon scattering occurs and how it is different from the bulk semiconductors i hope these uh, many points are clear to you the second scattering mechanism is nothing but the impurity scattering so as the name suggests it's a scattering due to the presence of impurities now your impurities may be ionized impurities or neutral impurities so both these ionized as well as the neutral impurities uh, they form a large contribution in scattering the in uh, semiconductors at lower temperature now consider our uh, very familiar modulation doped heterostructure the aluminum gallium arsenide and the gallium arsenide region so here we can see that the electron motion occurs in this region right in this region which is the gallium arsenide region or uh, this uh, the electron motion is parallel to the interface right similarly in a mo structure also the electron moves within this inversion layer we have this inversion layer or the channel region here uh, 
and the electron motion occurs in this and here the electrons are separated from the impurities where does the impurity lie in the silicon oxide the gate oxide layer so basically we have our we are trying to separate our electrons from the impurities present in our materials right so that's what we are uh, saying here right now what happens uh, uh, what are the things that we must consider when we want to uh, calculate the impurity scattering in mode fit so let's see what are the uh, things that we will consider while doing that so while uh, determining the impurity scattering in mode fit we uh, take into consideration certain assumptions which are we assume that the impurities are located in a 2d plane at a distance d of the electrons in the channel and the electrons that cause scattering event has energy close to fermi level see as we have said in the case of our gallium arsenide aluminum gallium arsenide layer we had made sure that our electrons uh, in the channel they uh, have an inner energy close to the fermi level right and the impurities are located at a distance at a particular distance away from these electrons so that uh, the scattering event has an energy which is close to the fermi level so that is one assumption another thing that we assume is that the concentration of the impurities must not be too high so uh, why do we uh, consider this so that the charged impurity interacts independently with the carrier or the electrons so we don't want the impurity concentration to be too high so that their interaction is all mixed up say so with these uh, two assumptions we can determine the impurity scattering in the case of a mode fit see when i repeat mode fit it is nothing but aluminum gallium arsenide and gallium arsenide modulation doped hetero junction or hetero structure okay so keeping these assumptions in mind we can find that uh, the mobility of carriers in the case of a mode fit increases as d cube i'm sorry it's d cube d cube so uh, and what is d uh, if you remember d is nothing but the periodicity of the well the uh, width of the well plus the barrier together forms your periodicity d now uh, with what regard can we select a value for d in fact there is no particular uh, or a perfect value for d if the value of d is too large the concentration of electrons in the channel decreases we can just uh, visualize that right see if the uh, width of your well is too large which means your periodicity is too large the electrons may be present anywhere in the channel and the concentration of electron automatically decreases when the concentration of electron decreases in the channel this in fact in turn decreases the electric field and then thus the transconductance of a mode fit so uh, in impurity scattering what we have seen is that uh, what are the type of impurities that cause the scattering we have the ionized and neutral impurities and we saw the case of uh, modulation doped heterojunction and mosfet where were, where is the presence of electrons right so then we discussed what are the assumptions that we can consider to determine the impurity scattering for mode fit so we considered two assumptions for that that was so i hope the two scattering mechanisms mechanisms i'm sorry mechanisms the electron phonon scattering and the impurity scattering is pretty clear moving on to the third kind of scattering the surface roughness scattering now again we can uh, inter interpret from the heading that it is some kind of scattering which may be formed due to the roughness in the surface right <laughs> that's pretty clear now uh, where is this kind of scattering prominent that's what we are going to see now 
This kind of scattering is basically due to the interaction of electrons with rough surfaces. Um, we may not always obtain ideal flat surfaces. Surfaces when I say it's like interfaces, right? So the interface may have some kind of roughness. Now, let's consider the modes as well as the mode fit. Now, in case of mode fit, this kind of scattering is not very prominent. Why? Because mode fit basically have perfect interfaces. We have seen uh, various techniques for manufacturing mode fits, right? So basically we have this MBE, a molecular beam epitaxy method of fa fabrication of mode fits. So these methods are so precise that the interfaces formed from these methods form perfect interfaces. We don't have any scope for roughness in the case of mode fit. But that is not the case of most devices. In most devices, see what happens, we have an oxide layer, right? This oxide layer is in fact grown thermally. It's not like uh, we can make it perfectly using MB. We can't do that. So in most structures, this oxide layer is formed, is, is grown thermally. And as a result, your interface is not as perfect. We have roughness in the case of most structures. It's not, uh, the interface is not perfect in the case of, as in the case of mode fit. Now, we can see that in the case of most structures, the interface scattering uh, depends upon the width of your quantum well, right? Now, as the width decreases, the electron wave function, they penetrate deeper into the oxide semiconductor barrier. As the width decreases, the electron wave function, they can penetrate deeper into your oxide semiconductor barrier. And what happens as a result? As a result, uh, as the wave function is penetrated deeper, more electrons are exposed to your interface roughness. Because of which your scattering increases. And it is the reason, and this is the reason for the decrease in mobility. Why you can find a decrease in mobility at a particular gate voltage. So the impurity scattering is uh, basically significant at temperature, low enough so that your uh, phonon scattering is negligible. So like both of them doesn't happen at the same time. When a temperature is so low that the phonon scattering is negligible, we have a score for surface roughness scattering. That's about surface roughness scattering. So in surface roughness scattering, what we saw is that uh, as the name indicated, the scattering was due to the surface roughness. Here, we uh, there are two devices that we consider, the mode fit and the mode structures. In mode fit, this kind of uh, scattering is like negligible since uh, their interfaces are perfectly made using techniques like MB. But that's not the case of mode structures where the oxide layers are grown thermally and hence they have more surface roughness, right? So, uh, that's all about surface roughness scattering. I hope that's clear. Coming to the last scattering mechanism, the inter subband scattering. So for that, I want you to consider, uh, yeah, before we go on to this, I want you to consider this figure. So now just consider a 2D electron system. We consider potential we'll say we have uh, quantized energy levels e1 e2 e3 and we have the corresponding submans just as shown in here so say for when your electron concentration is very large in the well the energy level with energy greater than e1 energy level with greater than e1 will obviously get filled because your electron concentration is pretty high now, if the electron concentration is high enough so that your Fermi level just crosses your energy level corresponding to E2. When your electron concentration is high so that your Fermi level crosses your 
energy level e2 what happens the electron with energy near to your fermi level because it has crossed e2 near to your fermi level can undergo two type of scattering either it can go an intra band scattering within the energy level e2 intra band within the same section or else there can be a inter band scattering between n equal to 2 energy level and n equal to 1 energy level okay so what have we seen right now we have a 2d electron system or simply saying it's a potential well when the electron concentration is too high such that uh, the energy level greater than e1 gets easily filled now if the electron concentration further increases so that your fermi level just cross e2 there can be two type of scattering one is a intra band scattering within the sub band e2 another one is the inter band scattering along your energy levels n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 across these two levels this kind of scattering mechanism is called inter sub band scattering right so in this case so in this case the total scattering probability increases and the mobility electron mobility decreases i hope these four kind of scattering mechanisms are pretty clear so what we discussed was parallel transport electron transport parallel to the interface parallel to your potential barrier that's parallel transport they are similar to your transport in bulk semiconductors except the difference in your dos function and scattering mechanism and because of this reason we studied the different scattering mechanism the first scattering mechanism was your electron scattering mechanism uh, uh electron phonon scattering right so we studied what is phonon how does the scattering occur and what is the difference between the bulk three important points and in impurity scattering we considered a uh, mode structure and mode uh, mode fed structures so we just saw where uh, is this impurity present and uh, what are the conditions what are the assumptions we make to calculate the impurity scattering in mode fed two important things and then we discuss the surface roughness scattering now uh, how is how does this surface roughness scattering occur what is the surface roughness in the case of a mode fed and mos why in mode fed it is uh, negligible and why in mos structures it is prominent we saw that and finally the inter sub band scattering due to the concentration of electrons so for that we are considering a potential well to understand the concept i hope these things are clear right so thank you in the next session we'll discuss the perpendicular transport and hot electron effect thank you have a great day